All right, in this video, I am just doing an example on how to use the method of joints to solve a truss problem in statics. So here we have our truss, it's pretty simple. There's just one externally applied force here, and it's simply supported. Um, all of the members in the truss are one meter long, so that means all of these triangles are going to be equilateral triangles, so every angle you see is going to be 60 degrees. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do for using method of joints is to draw our free body diagram of the entire structure. And now we can find the reaction forces here at A and E. So if we take the sum of forces in the x direction, well, that's just AX, and that has to be equal to 0, so AX is equal to 0. If we take the sum of forces in the y direction, we know that we have to have negative 200 newtons. That's that applied force down, plus AY plus EY and that all has to be equal to zero. And then we have to come back to that, so we'll take a sum of moments. We'll pick some positive sense, and let's take the sum of moments about A. Okay, so when we take the sum of moments about A, we know that's going to be equal to zero, so we have, uh, this will be a negative sense, so we have negative 200 times 1.5 meters, that's 200 newtons times 1.5 newtons, plus the moment caused by this guy, so it'll be plus EY times 2 meters. Alright, that's all equal to 0. Then we just rearrange for EY and we'll get EY is equal to, this is 200 times 1.5 so that is uh, that's 300 newton meters over 2 meters and that's going to give us 150 newtons. Then bringing this back in here we just have to sum up to 200 using our sum of forces in the y direction so we're going to find that AY is equal to 50 newtons and these guys are both pointing up. Alright so now the next thing that we need to do is we need to draw a free body diagram for each of the joints. Alright so now we have all of the free body diagrams for each joint. I've drawn all of the unknown forces which are all the internal forces in the members themselves. I've drawn them all in tension so they're always pulling away from the point. Notice if for example member AB if it's in tension at A it's pulling away from A. It's also pulling away from B. That's If it's in tension somewhere in the rod it's in tension everywhere in the rod. Um, the reason we do this, this is just a sign convention so if we, when we're solving for the magnitudes of these uh, forces, if we get it to be a positive force, that we know that it is actually in tension. And if we find that it's a negative magnitude, then we just know that it's uh, the member is actually in compression. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start solving these one by one. And we have to start with one that has a maximum of two unknowns. So we can just start with, uh, with joint A here. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the sum of forces in the y direction. And we do that because we already know something in the y direction. So we have 50 newtons going up and then we have plus AB sine 60 and that all has to be equal to 0. So if we just rearrange for AB we get AB is equal to negative 50 over 0 0.866 that's just the sine of 60 and when you punch that in your calculator you're going to find that the force, the internal force in AB is negative 57 let's say 0.7 newtons. So that negative sign means that this is in compression and we'll just indicate that with a C in brackets just to keep things straight. Okay, so now we'll take the sum of forces in the, uh, in the x direction. So sum of forces in the x direction and we get, uh, well we know that, the, that we have this negative 57.7 newtons so it's pointing this way actually so in the x direction it's the negative component. Uh, so we have negative uh, there we go, negative 57.7 times cos of 60 plus we have AB and that's uh, this member is entirely, it's all the internal force will be entirely oriented in the x direction uh, and that's equal to 0. So if we just have cos 60 times 57.7, cos 60 is just 0 0.5 so we're going to find out that, uh, oh sorry this is AC, uh, what am I doing? There we go. Okay, A, C. All right, so plus, so A, C, we just reorganize that and we're going to find that this is equal to 28.85 newtons. This number is positive, so we know that this is actually in tension and that's exactly what we want. Now, something that, that might be worthwhile doing is as we progress, now that we know that something is in compression, we know that A, B is in compression, I would suggest that you come back and you switch the arrows here. Uh, you know, you don't have to. You might be. You might find that you're doing it a slightly different way in your 
in your exams and things, but I just like to keep track of which way we're actually going. All right, so now when we, when we want to solve for B next, let's grab the free body diagram for B. Okay, so we're going to move this in. Now we know that AB is in compression and it has a magnitude of 57.7 newtons. So we already have the, the sense here properly. So we can actually, instead of writing AB, what we can do is we can just write 57.7 newtons. Okay, so let's take the sum of forces in the y direction first. So we'll have 57.7 times sine of 60, sine of 60, and then we'll subtract out BC times uh, the sine of 60, right? Because this is also on a 60 degree angle because of all of our equilateral triangles, that's equal to zero. What we can do is we can actually just divide out the sine of 60 from both sides, bring the BC over, and so we're gonna find that BC is actually going to equal positive 57.7 newtons. And again, this is a positive value, so that means we're in tension. If we analyze this for one second, we can look at this point, and we see that there's this x, this is y component from this guy pointing up, so it would give it the tendency to want to translate up. So just looking at this, this is the only other component, or this is the only other force of the y component, so it has to be pulling down to counteract that, so we're not getting any of that translation for this particle, basically. Uh, so that's something, uh, a quick check you can usually do to make sure if you're, if these numbers are making sense. Okay, so let's take the sum of forces in the x direction now. So sum of forces in the x direction for joint B, we have 57.7 times cos of 60. That's 60 plus, and we're going to add this because they're both going into the right hand in the positive x direction. So we have plus BC, so this will be 57. 0.7 times cos of 60, and then we also have plus BD, and that's all equal to zero. Okay, so when we add those all together, so cos 60 is 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 times 57.7 times two is just going to equal, and we'll bring it to the other side, so we'll get BD is equal to negative 57.7 newtons, and that negative sign, again, that means we're in compression. All right. So then what I would do, just to make sure we're keeping keeping track of what's actually going on, I'll actually just change the sense of this so it is in compression. So it's pushing on the joints, it's not pulling on the joints. And we'll be able to use that once we come over here, so we'll have the proper sense. Okay, moving on. Um, let's, let's pull out this guy. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for these guys now. So let's do the sum of forces in the y direction first. Sum of forces in the y. So we're going to have 57.7. So we have the y component of this force. 57.7 times sine of 60 plus the y component of this force. So we plus CD times sine of 60. And there's no other y components of the other forces because they're just in the x direction, so that will just be equal to zero. What we can do is we can just divide out the sine 60 again, and we're going to find that CD, if we bring it to the other side, uh, is going to equal negative 57.7 newtons. And that means that it is in compression. All right, uh, when we take the sum of forces in the y direction, or sorry, sum of forces in the x direction for the joint C, we have negative AC, and we found that AC was 28.85 newtons. So negative 28.85 newtons. I'm putting negative here because it's going to the left in the negative x direction. Then we have minus BC cos 60, and BC was 57.7. So we have 57.7 cos 60. And now we have plus CD cos 60, and CD was 57.7. Oh, sorry, we have minus because this is in compression. See, it's really easy to get screwed up with that. Um, so we have minus CD, so 57.7 cos 60, and then plus CE, plus CE, just like that. All right, when we just add up these together and bring them to the other side, then we'll get CE is equal to positive 86.55 newtons and so that positive number means that this guy is in fact in tension so we had cd was in compression what we should do is we should just come back again make sure we update that so we're not getting confused like i almost did in here uh, and then we'll indicate that cd is in fact in compression 
Uh, and then now when we go to solve for joint D, we'll actually know the proper sense of this. All right, so let's actually go and solve this one now. So we have, that's our free body diagram. All right, let's bring it down here and give us ourselves some space. Okay, so we wanna solve for joint D now. So let's take the sum of forces in the Y direction. And that's actually all we'll need to do because we have this one is known, this one is known, this one is known. We only have one unknown. So we have the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be equal to 57. So we have CD, uh, this is in compression, 57.7. 57.7 times sine of 60. Right, and this is positive because of the compression, it's pushing upwards. Uh, then we'll have minus 200 newtons. And then we'll have minus DE uh, times sine of 60. Okay, and this is all equal to zero. So this term here, 57.7 sine 60 is actually just equal to 50. This is 100. So if we rearrange that, we're going to get that uh, oh, we're going to get that DE is equal to about it's 150 yeah, over sine 60. So that's 0 0.866. And if you just simplify that, we'll find that DE is 173.2 newtons, and that is in compression. All right, so what we want to do again, just so we're on top of things, we have DE. We just found out that that's in compression, so we can just come back and update this. If you want, I guess, if you, if you don't have this, and if you're just doing these individual diagrams, you can update your diagrams as you go, uh, just as long as you're indicating um, that you're actually changing. And actually, I need to write, uh, sorry, that was negative. There we go, negative and negative. Yeah, watch out for that. Okay, so if you notice, actually, we've actually just solved for all of the internal force uh, and all of the internal forces and all of the members, and that was the the goal of the problem. So, looking back, we have A, B. Maybe I should draw some boxes around them. So here's one of our answers. Here's a another one of our answers. There was B, C right there. We had B, D. Uh, we we found all of the magnitudes and senses. So whether or not they're in tension or compression. Uh, and then lastly, we also had DE down here. Okay, so we have found all of the internal forces, but one thing that we could do is we haven't done, we haven't tested joint E here, the very last joint. What we can do is if we if we test joint E here and we find that uh, everything nets out to zero, then we'll know that we've done everything correctly. So uh, the last thing we want to do is just do our check. Ooh, there we go. Okay, one last free body diagram, little analysis down here. All right, let's come down here. All right, so we'll just check that our sum of forces in the y direction is actually zero at this joint using the internal force that we got. So we have uh, negative DE, where was DE? Right here. Uh, so we have negative 173.2 times sine of 60. That should be an equal sign. Um, plus 150 equals zero, right? So plus that guy. Well, sine 60 is 0 0.866, and 0 0.866 times 173.2 is negative 150, right? With that negative sign there, so plus 150, and we're going to net out to zero. So that looks like we've done that correctly. If this guy checks out, then we'll know we've done everything right. So we'll also take our sum of forces in the x direction, and we just have, what was that? That was DE again. So it was, in this case, it's positive because we're going in the positive X direction. So it's 173.2 times sine of 60. Oh, sorry, times cos of 60 this time. Times cos of 60 for the X component of DE. And then we'll subtract out CE. And CE was 86.55. And that should equal 0. And cos 60 is just 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 173, we're going to get uh, just basically 86.6 minus 86.6. There's just some rounding throughout the problem, uh, but that's basically going to get us to zero. So look, we know that we've done this correctly because our internal forces, when we get to the other end of the truss, are actually netting out to zero with also, with also the applied force of the reaction. And we know that we've done everything correct. So again, looking here, we have found all of our internal forces. We check to make sure that they're actually correct and that's everything that you need to do in the problem.